we're gonna we're gonna swing over to Houston, Texas, and we're gonna bring in we're gonna bring in uh, Kim Davis, and Kim Davis currently is the host of uh, is a veteran sports journalist, host of Chalk Talk, and a keynote speaker. Uh, Kim Davis, welcome to Real Deal Sports Show. How you doing this morning? I'm good. Good morning. How are you? Great, great. Excellent. What's, What's up, good? Kim? Good morning. Love the frames. Love the earrings on point on good a morning. Saturday morning. I know it's early there. Good morning. Thanks for hey, joining us. Hey, it's okay. Show. Look, the early bird gets the warm. I don't mind it. Good morning to you guys. Thanks for having me. Yes, indeed. And we are, you, 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 you're a writer and you follow the Houston Astros. And uh, after, I, that, after that victory, the World Series, I see they're a little slow out the gate this year. How do you see Dusty Baker handling the team and moving them forward throughout this season? So I, you know, I'm a, I have nothing but respect for Dusty Baker. I think he's doing a great job. You know, they, they started the season um, a little shorthanded. Jose Altuve, of course, got injured in that, um, the uh, WBC game during spring training, had a, uh, had a broken bone in his wrist or his mm -hmm. hand. So you start off without Altuve, Michael Brantley, who they expected back in, in the outfield and in the lineup is, has not joined back in the lineup because he's still nursing some injuries. And then one of their starting pitchers, one of the, you know, the, one of the top, they would say two or three, Lance mm -hmm. McCullers, they thought he would be ready. He is not. So they, they've gotten off to a slow start. They got back to 500 last night with a win in Atlanta. Um, it's early. And I think that's what people sometimes forget, especially when you cover a team like the Astros and they've had such success over the last, what, six or seven years. They've yes. been in the hunt every time. But it's, it's, you know, I, I tell my colleagues sometimes, it's still April. <laughs> so, right. you know, don't worry yet. Um, if, and I and think about this, George. Last year, the New York Yankees got off to an amazing start. Pretty, people pretty much had given them the pennant by the end of April. But right. then what do you do at the middle of the season? What do you do in August? You know, baseball is such a long season. You don't want to get way behind, but you got to be able to balance being in the hunt and peaking at the right time. So I'm not worried, at least at this point, and I trust Dusty to handle it. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. I think so. Michael Brantley, gosh, that, he seems to be injured all the time. Man, I'm, what, what, well, in the last, I think the last two years, uh, the last year and a half, he's really struggled. Like he, he had that shoulder injury shoulder. come back last year, and he ended up having to, you know, basically be at DL for the rest of the season. He was in spring training. They were bringing him along. He was excited to be there. So he is, you know, they're taking their time with him. They expect him to be back. But yeah, he he has he has suffered some injuries. So they've had some other bright spots. You know, the young kid from Houston who played at the University of Houston, Corey Jokes, has come on and has been um, the rookie's been well, has played well. He's had a couple big hits and you know a couple home runs already. So it's exciting to see him and. You know, they've had people that are, have filled in, like Mauricio uh, uh, Dubon, who's filling in for Altuve at second. He's one of the leaders on the team right now in terms of batting average. But again, it's early. I think when you get people back in place, as long as they, they finally got to 500, which is a big deal, because you don't want yeah. to be that team, right? So right. I think that they will, they'll start, you know, um, creeping up, but it's just them getting, being consistent. And like I said, it's early. And if Dusty says, don't worry, I'm not gonna worry. There, there you go. Because <laughs> Dusty, Dusty knows best. And by the way, his yeah. son, uh, one of his son, Darren Baker, is doing very well here with the uh, Rochester Red, Red Wings, which is the uh, Washington Nationals uh, farm team. And I'm, I'm looking forward to interviewing him next week. They get back here for a homestand. He's playing very, very. He's not flashy, but he gets his right. done. He's 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 two for four, three for three. Like last night, he was three for yeah. three in the loss. Because Washington doesn't have much in their farm system. I mean, they they lose. Almost more. I think they could send us out there. And we might uh, do just as, <laughs> do me, you, and uh, everybody we have right here on the show right now could do just as well as some of those guys. They, they, I mean, they strike out a lot. But but Darren Baker, every game he's showing that uh, he can hit and he can field, and I think he'll be up with the Washington Nationals. Maybe not at uh, this season, but even but the way the Nationals look. They look just like the farm team. They lose an awful lot of games, and the, the games mm -hmm. are over by the third or fourth inning. Uh, oh wow! Of, of, yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's ugly. It's, it's it's not it's not a pretty thing to see. But Darren Baker, I think, might uh, Dusty's son might be up uh, with the Washington Nationals later this year. And no, uh, wait, 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 w
Look like yeah. another mammoth of a man. I look like a Greek god just built. <laughs> what is he looks like? I keep thinking he's gonna have an Aaron Judge type season. Like you said, it's April. What's your thoughts on him? <laughs> it, it, am I do I have maybe too high of expectations? Maybe being an uh, AO MVP triple crown. What's your thoughts on Jordan? Listen, I feel the same way about Jordan, and if Jordan to be healthy for an entire season or most of a season. I think he's that guy, you know, he is, and, and watching him, you know, when you watch him, just the way he swings, it's just kind of like a piece of art. It's just yeah. awesome. I think he, I think he has that, that, that ability. Remember he came out of spring and Dusty was kind of watching him because he had hurt his hand or something and they were looking at it because, you know, it takes a while, especially, you know, when you're talking about gripping the bat and, and so, they were monitoring how he was it his hand or his knee. He had an injury, you know. Sometimes those bigger guys that 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 look like Greek gods, they they stay a little injured just because of the pressure they put on their bodies. But to answer your question, I think you I don't think you have your expectations are too lofty. If Jordan can be healthy, I think he's in that conversation, and and so I'm excited to see what he can do. Like last night, you know, they're down two in the bottom of the in the top of the ninth. I mean, um, they're down one was, and there's Ty. It's Ty in the top of the ninth. He comes in and hits a two-run home run to give him to, to seal the victory against the Braves last night. You're not fun to watch, and whenever he comes to the plate, you know you got a shot at something happening. Mm -hmm. Exactly, because that ball was high out of the strike zone that he hit last night. And I mean, he yeah. put that ball way out. I mean, I thought it was going to be a deep fly ball, but that ball went, it carried and went way out of the stadium, uh, way out of the, uh, into the uh, crowd, the upper deck almost. Uh, they, they helped put them ahead and win that game last night against Atlanta. Uh, how do you see the rules with, with the speeding up the game? The, uh, how, what type of effect you, you, you're going to think that's going to be on the Astros and, and the MLB overall? Well, first of all, I like it. <laughs> I like the pick. I like what it's doing so far. I mean, I know there's some baseball purists, and I'm a big baseball fan. Obviously, I guess it makes me not a purist. It has sped the game up some because the games are so long, you know. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And it has some other probably unintended consequences. It's impacting beer sales. With now owners are like, whoa, what do we think about this? Because the games are ending sooner. So they're trying to adjust like, well, no, no, we'll go ahead and sell sell beer through the end of the game. And, and y'all can sit here and drink because that's that's a revenue piece for them. But it has sped the game up. You know, you're talking about, you know, being able to get out in two and a half hours, uh, many nights. And baseball games were averaging three hours and more. I mean, if you got out of a baseball game in two and a half hours, you thought like, well, this is a this is a great night. So I think it's I think it's going to take a minute for everybody to settle in. I mean, I've covered a couple games where we've seen, you know, a pitcher not meet the clock and, you know, be charged the ball. But I've also seen it where it's also affected affected the batter because the batter also is held to a time. He has to be facing um, in place and facing the pitcher with. Um, at least eight seconds left on the clock. And if he is not, then he's charged a strike. And I've seen that happen. And I don't think people really, we didn't really think about how it was going to impact hitters, mm -hmm. but it does because it's, it's the whole process. So, so far, I mean, again, we're just uh, um, uh, you know, a month, almost a month into the start of this regular season. I like the fact that it speeds it up some. I think it's good for the game and, um, and, and, to, and to be able to get fans to, to stay engaged and to watch. And that's that was a challenge that baseball was having. It, it sure was. It sure was. It was a big challenge, uh, getting fans to stay and enjoy and, and, and not and watch the games, not be on their phones uh, most of the time because <laughs> people were getting hit because they wasn't watching the game and foul balls coming over and everything, the whole nine yards. So, yeah, it keeps people now more on their toes. I think it will make for, and it has already in the first month, yeah. uh, just watching these games uh, is making for a much better product for sure. Definitely. Yeah. But hey, <clears throat> yep. Hey, Kim, just one other thing, just specifically pitching wise about the Astros. I know you got to talk more macro level. My, I, I, I do the Astros against, against my Yankees, man, it's always, <laughs> always something, man. Hopefully this will be the year my Yankees can finally take them down. But talk to me about front end and back end. Again, it's early. I know Luis Garcia seemed like the starting pitching a little bit. My um, Jose, and I always want to botch up his name. I will today. Uh, your Abreu? Who? No, no. Jose uh, starts with a U. Your, your, oh, your um, he, he just got tapped. Your Queedy. Your Queedy. Okay, I was like, I know. I always better the pronunciations. 
Um, but him, and then talk to me on the back end, Ryan Presley versus to me, it looks like Rafael Montero to me m should be the closer, but Presley had the name. So if you can tell, tell us about front end and back end, where do you see the Astros going? So I know the first thing many people say is, man, they probably should have paid Verlander. And I, you know, I wouldn't have paid him that amount of money either, right? He's because they had anyway. so many young arms and he's hurt, right? He started the season hurt. But um, Garcia has struggled a little bit early. I think if you get Lance back healthy, that gives you, because he, you know, it'd be probably from Lance one, two. And so you miss really Lance on the front end of that in, in your starting rotation. Um, I think that's what we're, that's what you're seeing where some of the challenges are. Um, Hunter Brown, who has looked really good. I mean, Hunter has come in and given him seven innings a couple times and pitched well. Many people compare his pitching style to that of Verlander, not comparing him to Verlander, but a young, you know, he has that kind of, like he's kind of emulated, I think, his, his technique after what Ver Verlander does. And so if Hunter Brown can continue, that's going to be something helpful for them. And so I think the starting pitching is, is a work in progress, but will be okay. Um, and then on the back end, you mentioned Presley. I mean, Presley hasn't been, hasn't had his greatest start to me. I think what he does is, it's one of those things where it's, it's clearly his spot, right? Until he, he loses it. I like Montero, but you know who I also like? He's more of a middle reliever, and that's Brian Abreu. I mean, he has been effective coming out of the bullpen, and he was really key in the run last year to the World Series. And so they've got some good young arms on the back end as well, which is why overall I think that they will be okay. Um, you mentioned farm system earlier, George, and, and the Astros for a while had, you know, their farm system was feeding them, right? They, I mean, you got pain that right. he came out of the farm system. And so they're – you know, bringing in Dana Brown, a new general manager, the goal is to really kind of replenish because they haven't done great in recent years with the draft. And so that's the place where they're working is to replenish the farm system. Um, because one of the challenges when, it, when you're as bad as the Astros were for so long and you're always getting the first pick, if you hit on those picks, at some time you've got to make a decision as to whether we can keep them, a Carlos Correa, a George Springer and others. You right. can't pay everybody. And so there's kind of a catch-22 about having those great picks, so many of them. So they're they're rebuilding their farm system. But I, I, I'm curious to see. I think Luis, you know, I talk to Dusty sometimes just offline, and he, he doesn't seem concerned about Garcia at this point. So, you know, we'll see. I think that they will be, as you said, um, they'll be okay. And I, I think that Garcia has to also settle in with the pitch clock. I don't know. I mean, Dusty hasn't said that that's a problem for him, nor has he. But I just wonder if that's been an adjustment that he's still trying to trying to make. Okay, excellent. Well, Kim Davis, we appreciate you coming on the show. Also, Jose Abreu is uh, is uh, doing well uh, so far. Oh yeah, so far. Jose Abreu. Well, let me tell you, uh, it's interesting because. There's been some criticism locally. It's amazing when you live in a city like Houston and and media, because the media always criticizes Dusty. Like Dusty can do nothing right for many of them, which is amazing to me because he's Dusty. But they're complaining about Jose Abreu. You know, you gave up all the, I mean, you went and got this guy and he's older and he's not doing anything. I, and Dusty's like, listen, it's April. You know, when I talk to people in Chicago, they say he starts slow. And yeah. he has started slow, but he's been driving in runs. He's just not hitting lots of home runs. He said he starts slow. His Aprils are usually slow. That's historically how he plays. But wait until you see what he is, where he is by late May and June. So I think those are going to be – I think they'll be fine. It's just – I'm just not concerned yet. And this, in Houston, of course, covering sports, there's so many other things to be really concerned about. I'm not concerned about where the Astros are. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. I know you got the, the weather and everything. And Abreu carried the White Sox a lot in July and August. When he gets, when the weather's hot, that's when he gets hot. So right, he, he, right. He, he really uh, mid season summer is when he gets down. So uh, definitely, we look forward to that. And we look forward to having you back around as we get closer to the playoffs, to the end of the season. Uh, uh, Kim Davis, uh, thank you for coming, host of Chalk Talk. We appreciate you coming on the show. All right, thanks a lot. You guys have a great rest of your weekend. Thanks, Kim. All right, thank you. Keep looking fly. I like it. Keep looking fly. I appreciate you, my friend. All right. <laughs>